I was given a couple of LED lamps yesterday by a friend called John who lives locally. And he said the interesting thing about these is they're sort of designed for car use. There's four visible chips in here. And it's the type that's got that soft, silicone type cover that it's just kind of been potted into. And he'd uh, peeled one apart and said you can get right access into the uh, bare chips themselves. And once you get the phosphor off, they're, they're that deep purple colour. And that kind of suggests that these are flip chips. So I thought it'd be interesting to actually investigate that. So let's actually do it with the power on here. So this silicon just kind of, this goo, just sort of, this gel just peels off. Let's see if I can do this without actually killing them. It'd be nice if I could, and reveal that purple colour. So I'm just hooking my fingers under here. Tell you what, will I zoom up on this? I will zoom up in it. In fact, tell you what, what if I come up here? This is where it all goes wrong. I'm just going to uh, bring it up to about this height, focus on that. Is that focused? Hold on. Focus. Yeah, like a, okay, so let's bring it up to here, light it again, and I shall continue picking away at it. So let's get this there. Uh, it's flicking because, uh, well, hopefully it's flicking just because of the connections here. Or is it? If I just, no, I've just shorted it out, that's fine. There is a resistor, and he said it says it's got that thing that these listings say canvas compatible which is a load of crap. I don't know why they, I don't know where they came up across that canvas thing. What they actually mean is that it passes enough current, theoretically, that lamp monitoring systems will detect that the lamp, they kind of see it that there's a lamp still there. So I've got most of the clear gel off. I'm going to go into the phosphor-loaded gel here, and I'm not sure what color this is going to show up in the camera. I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to actually do this. My apologies if this is not in focus, it would have been tiny anyway. So let's uh, try and get the gel. Oh, I've definitely got a blast of purple there. Oh, that is just a psychedelic purple. That is such a bright purple. Let's see if I can do this without damaging the chips. If I do damage the chips, I'm guessing there's four in series because I've done some voltage tests in this. That is extremely purple. I was thinking it might be blue LEDs underneath the phosphor, but that is really distinctly violet LEDs. Right, tell you what, I'm going to have to turn the, the light off now so I can actually see what I'm doing. Let's uh, just refocus on that. This is where I can't see a thing now. I've been looking at an LED. That was, that was a bad idea. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to expose this completely, and then I'm going to take pictures of it, and then we can analyse it. But at the moment, I've got most of the phosphor off, Take a wee bit off there. Uh, the other side has still got the phosphor on it. So I've got this side off. Let's just light this again and see if it works. Have I just killed it? I have just killed it. That's annoying. I must have knocked one of the chips off. Aw. That's annoying. So yeah, I've just killed the lamp. That's a shame. Not to worry. Uh, this is good now. Uh, I can just strip it completely. And we'll take, I'll take up some pictures of it and we'll have a much closer look at the circuit board. That's the picture taken. I have drawn an outline around the tracks on, and pads on the circuit boards. And I've also flipped it so that the positive pad here, the plated through hole, and the positive pad matches here. So this is basically almost like an x-ray through, but flipped so that everything correlates and we can see where everything goes. So what's actually happening here is the positive supply comes up this uh, electrode here and goes through this resistor, this 360, that's 36 ohm resistor, and it goes to this pad over here. So this, the positive is connected directly to here. And then this pad here, I'm not sure why they've done that. It's a plated through hole, but it doesn't go anywhere. So it goes through this resistor and then it goes up to the first LED, goes through the first LED, and then goes up to the next LED, goes through that LED, jumps down through this hole, it goes through this LED, and then this LED, and then goes to the negative. So it really is just simply a 36 ohm resistor with four LEDs in series connected across the 12 volt supply. And I did some tests. Let's uh, grab this. I tested it at various voltages. 
And at 12 volts, it was 16 milliamps, 12.5, 24 milliamps, 13 volts, 29 milliamps, 13.5, 38 milliamps, and 14 volts was just nudging 15, 50 milliamps. And I'm wondering if that's their target current was maybe about 50 milliamps. That's sort of a typical high-ish voltage in a car, although some cars can go much higher uh, voltage than that. So it's an interesting construction. It is a very deep, psychedelic purple light comes off these uh, theoretically, I could just bridge if I knocked. If you knock one of these uh, LEDs off, because they are the classic. Well, they are the classic now. Flip chip. It's not like. Uh, hold on. Where's a, a notepad? Notepad. Let's tame this down a little bit. That's better. If it was a standard. Oh, that's a purple pen. That kind of, uh, that's indicated by the purple case, right here, I didn't know that was a purple pen, so we've got a purple pad, that's fine. If it was a standard LED, you'd typically have a chip bonded in one of these pads, and you'd have two little uh, pads in that, and a, a wire going across like that, and one going across like that, and if you try removing the, uh, the sort of like the phosphor loaded gel off those uh, LEDs, it usually breaks that wire, but this one, uh, is definitely using flip chip, and it's quite a long, thin flip chip. It's this very slender, long chip, like that. And you can see the solder around that end. And one of the case of one of those LEDs, the solder had gone right over the top of the chip. They seem to be very, very resilient. And the circuit is just simply plus 12 volts or whatever uh, through that resistor, which was 36 ohms. And then the four LEDs in series. And this is where people ask why I keep drawing sort of a cat's face when I do that. Not sure. It's uh, the arrows, come, the light coming off the LEDs. And that's zero volts or negative, if you want. So it's a very simple little lights. They're exactly what you'd expect. They are just a little circuit board, those LEDs. If it was an actual one of those like fake canvassy type things that puts an extra load, you'd possibly find another resistor or more soldered across here just purely to pass current. Uh, they sometimes do that, but those LEDs tend to get very hot. This one's quite nice in that it's not only not doing that, it stays quite cool. But even at the sort of 13.8, sort of 14 volts peak uh, battery charge, it's only passing about 50 milliamps total through that. I think that's fairly reasonable. And at 12 volts, it settles down to a very reasonable 16 milliamp, but still puts out plenty of light. And if you can carefully pick the uh, phosphor gel off, it does put out that really psychedelically deep purple colour, which again is pretty strange because it, traditionally it would be in blue LEDs that stimulating the red and green phosphors, the yellow phosphor. Um, the combined red and green creates the yellow effect. But uh, by using a deep purple, that contributes less to the white, and it means uh, ultimately they can tune the colour more based on the phosphors. So they're neat little lamps. Thanks for that, John. Uh, well worth taking to bits.